Hey folks, David Stewart here. Welcome to The Bridge. Let's talk a little bit about deceiving the audience. Now, I answered this with fellow author and editor Brian Niemeyer on the live stream recently. We went all over the place and talked about all kinds of things when it comes to basically surprising the audience or uh, making them think one thing is going to result in the plot while doing something else. So I want to talk about the good things and the bad things about this. So the basically distilled answer that um, we both gave was that you shouldn't try to obscure things from the audience. That is to say, you should write in a direct manner that the audience understands and present the things that the audience needs to understand to keep the plot going. Now, with that in mind, how do you create surprise endings if you're not withholding information from the audience? And the answer is, well, you go through the characters. The characters are always operating with the maximum amount of knowledge that they have at a given time. So creating things like tension in you know, a thriller or in a horror book or a horror movie is really about controlling the flow of information to the audience and really to the characters. So to the characters and by proxy, the audience. And if you do that well, then you are creating a sense of suspense and mystery as the characters go through and uncover uh, the facts that are necessary for them to succeed in their plot goals. So most horror has this, you have a monster, you have a threat, you have to figure out what it is. Characters do some investigations. They come up with a hypothesis about what the creature is and how they might defeat it. They maybe have an encounter with the monster. Turns out the monster doesn't respond to their hypothesis. They have to come up with a new one. And maybe there's a surprise ending where it turns out the monster was this person all along. And that's the point where you really have to think about what you're doing earlier in the story. Uh, that is to say, you don't want to have somebody pop out at the end and go, it was me all along, you know, uh, without any kind of prior clue. If you do it right, then people will go, ah, now I understand. You provided all the information, but because the plot was going forward in a you know pretty straightforward manner, I wasn't thinking that these clues meant what they meant. So if you look at a movie like The Sixth Sense, you get this revelation that the main character played by Bruce Willis is a ghost all along. And then there's a little bit of a, they show you the back shots to basically say, hey, remember we told you these things earlier? And you're like, oh, that that actually makes sense. He never did talk to anybody else. Um, this is something that could be possible. And it does feel like a surprise, but not something that is... Uh, unbelievable because all of those things have been done prior to that. Likewise, I've, I've done this in a couple of my books. I did it in Muramasa Blood Drinker. The solution to the big problem, the, the, the thing that they come up with to solve the overall conflict is actually thought of in like the second or third page of the book. It's thought of very, very early on in the plot when uh, the two main characters, Amaya and uh, Yoshio, are talking to each other about this killer. Um, but it's one of those things where they are talking about solutions and then it's only when you get to the end that you realize that one of those solutions really made sense given all the information that you had prior to that. Um, now, going to my book, Eyes in the Walls, because the person on the live stream specifically mentioned this book, Eyes in the Walls. Like, how did I accomplish that in this book? Well, it's all about the flow of information. Um, the flow of information is, because this is written in first person, it's very much in the perspective of the protagonist. And so the protagonist is getting information one chunk at a time, is coming up with um, theories and hypotheses to figure out the monster that's involved in the plot and is then going to be testing those. Um, and the big question that you have as you're going through the book is, is the main character crazy or is he sane? Is the monster real or is it some sort of uh, imaginary, imaginary thing provoked by like mental illness? And as you get deeper, one thing you think gets resolved because Maybe you try it and it doesn't work, and so you think it's the other, and then you go back to thinking it's the first thing because of this sequence that I talked about, which is that um, you come up with an idea for how you're going to beat the monster. It doesn't work, so you have to reformulate and recontextualize the information you have in the past, and the character's doing that, and because the character's doing that, the audience is also engaged in that, so it doesn't feel like things are obscured. Now, the wrong way to do it would be to do basically what J.J. Abrams does the master of lens flares, which is to simply not tell you the solution 
and then never really follow up on it. Uh, what people call mystery boxes, which is where you, rather than having a scene where you have the option to explain what's going on, and it would be very easy to explain what's going on, and a character, in fact, would ask questions that would create the response that they want, and characters maybe have no reason to not reveal the solution, you just avoid that. You just avoid giving um, giving the reader the relevant information that they need to basically forecast the plot to think about, hmm, I wonder how they're going to, to solve this. I wonder what their hypothesis is going to be. And for the characters themselves to formulate that hypothesis. And you can tell if this has been done poorly, like if it's in a first person perspective novel and the character really deep into the book reveals something very important about themselves, like that they had x-ray vision or something the whole time. That's so obvious and so out of left field. It feels like deus ex uh, machina. It feels like Deus Ex Machina. It's something that is uh, just feels like it's a solution that's presented in the middle of the plot with no prior explanation, no setup, no context whatsoever. So I mentioned J.J. Abrams. This was basically how Lost went as people kept watching Lost to figure out the solutions that they just refused to give you. And then none of those really went anywhere. They didn't really give you any of the solutions. So it became very unsatisfying. Now, I couldn't watch Lost because I found it dreadfully boring and annoying because they didn't explain that. Because they didn't tell a story in a straightforward manner, there really was no plot to the first couple episodes of Lost beyond the first, I don't know, 30 or 40 minutes of the entire series. Things were just kind of flailing about and nothing was ever resolved and it seemed like that was the way they were going to go. And from talking to people who finished the series, that's basically what they did with the series. And this is what J.J. Abrams did in the first Star Wars movie. He um, basically refused to explain anything. Why is Luke missing? Well, you could have explained that. Why is the, why did he leave a map? Well, we don't know. We just don't bother to explain it. We refuse to tell the audience the relevant information. It becomes something very unsatisfying. Now, all the fan theories that popped up after Force Awakens are a really good example of why you shouldn't do this, which is that if you obviously don't tell the audience some important piece of information and they're very aware of it, they are then going to think that that piece of information is going to be very relevant. It's going to be very important. It's going to be, it's going to be somehow the solution, the key to the plot. So they're going to be reading more intensely, watching more intensely to find out what you're going to do or how you're going to reveal that. One of the uh, most annoying things that I see in movies, and I see this in lots of movies, is they will have a flashback at some point to just basically give you the solution. They're like, oh yeah, uh, we didn't tell you that. So now we'll have a flashback flashback that'll just kind of fill that in rather than telling it to you at the relevant time, because they just don't have any other way to create plot, um, to, to create plot suspense. They can't regulate the flow of information in, in a correct way. And in some cases, that's the only way that you can solve the, the tension issue of the plot is to try to extract that information. But you're going to uh, you're going to have a hard time pulling that off and executing it really well. So generally, my advice is to avoid mystery boxes and uh, instead tell things in a straightforward manner and rather control the flow of information so that um, each time the character learns something, they can recontextualize what they have and hypothesize about how they're going to solve the problem the next go around. In fact, a lot of plot guides, like the three-act structure plot guides, will basically have that. You get to the end of the second act, the hero fights a battle and loses because he doesn't have all the relevant information. He hasn't properly evaluated the power of the antagonist. He has to take a step back, have that dark night of the soul thing. Am I really the worthy hero? And come up with the actual solution, usually helped by some other characters. Some other characters are like, wait a minute, how about you hypothesize things like this? How about you come up with a new way? Why don't you try this? And then that usually creates the plot solution. Um, and I've read a lot of books that basically do the same thing too. Uh, the Stormlight Archive books by Brandon Sanderson tend to do this. They drop you a little scene and then don't tell you any of the context of that scene. And you have to read to try to figure out that context and piece it together as a, as a reader. And some people really like that. But after about three books of that, I've got very, very tired of it. And when it's done well, and Brandon Sanderson's capable of doing this well because he's a good writer, then you will basically have a character understand that there's a mystery and then uncover that mystery, figure out the mystery, and the mystery will help you solve the main plot goal. Basically like what he did in Mistborn. So if you want an example of him doing it really well, you can look at the first Mistborn book. Um, it 
has all of those relevant details. They finally get contextualized right before the final battle and it creates the solution to the plot. Um, what you get in Stormlight Archive is so many different threads that are just kind of left hanging here and there. And you're like, well, are you going to tell me? You could easily just tell me exactly how that works. Why aren't you doing it? Well, because I want you, I want to save that for later, but then you never get the solution sometimes. So um, anyway, so I thought I'd give you some examples of that. I think that's the way that I executed it. And I think that's one of the best ways that you can do it is to just control the flow of information so that the characters are always acting in the most reasonable way, given the amount of information they have. Um, and uh, something Brian said is as you resolve one, you have another question. So um, you're figuring out the answer to one question. Another question pops up. You resolve this question. Now you have to figure out that question. And so as each thing resolves, there's another one that picks up until you get to the end of the plot and you have the entire story figured out. So anyway, that's that. I'm not into deceiving the audience. Rather, you want to give them the information in a way that is very controlled. I think a great horror movie, the execution of a great horror movie does this really, really well, but it can be applied basically to any genre. Um, I think that's one of the reasons that Harry Potter is very successful is it's a basically a mystery plot kind of put into this uh, fantasy setting. Uh, the, the characters, the kids are always trying to uncover facts to figure out how things are working. And you as the audience are with there with them, enjoying their hypothesis and making the same, coming to some of the same conclusions. And then when you finally get to the end, uh, you everybody's able to contextualize all the information they got. And maybe the solution's a little bit different than you thought. And I think that's also some of the strength, especially of the early M. Night Shyamalan movies, is that he does that. He sets out to do that. And he kind of gained a reputation for having these surprise endings that are still really good because the information for that surprise ending is located earlier, but you're just, you haven't gotten all the context to understand how that information is going to create the solution to your problem. So thanks so much. And I'll see you guys next time. Uh, newest book is actually the Krampus Christmas 2020 collection still available through the end or through at least the middle of January. You can get this big giant paperback. It's got, I think five complete books in it, including eyes on the walls, which I talked about today. Um, this is a, a really fun horror book. I really enjoyed, um, uh, writing this. And one of the things that people will say about the reviews is they love the ending. And this is exactly what I'm talking about is taking the audience for a ride and leaving them uncertain as to what the actual solution is until you get to the end. Um, so you can get that. This has some brand new novellas in it. So you can check this out, including a fantasy horror uh, novella called The Wasting Desert that um, I wrote basically just for this collection. Um, and then there's some other new stuff in there too that you probably haven't read. Uh, anyway, check it out. And I will see you guys next time.